Hello here and welcome again to another edition of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Nebraska, officially gentlemen through the halfway point of spring practice. Huskers uh, eight in the books here as of show taping. They'll only go one more day this week, um, but it's been somewhat of a big week. The Huskers got a scrimmage in on Saturday. Um, I, I think the most significant thing, um, and you just never know, uh, but this is not the norm really in a lot of places anymore. They they rip the green jerseys off the quarterbacks um, in that spring scrimmage, um, you know, and they have six scholarship quarterbacks here on campus. And yeah, you know, I, I think Sip, there it's a luxury. I mean, hey, you know what? Let's let's turn these guys loose a little bit. I, they, I like that. They did turn them loose. They should have. They actually didn't take the green jerseys off them, which I don't understand. But they were live. Yeah, they were live. I don't know why if you're going live, you don't take the green jerseys off. You should because players are trained to to not tackle green jerseys. But anyway, yeah, that was interesting. And the quarterbacks probably, as you'd expect, ran the ball well. We don't know exactly how well because we don't see it. But Matt Rule said they ran the ball well. And they have some guys that can run. I mean – Jeff, Jeff, I mean, Jeff Sims can run, and Heinrich can run, and Smothers Chubba, can or Chuba can run. Smothers is hurt, but he can Smothers run. Smothers is hurt. He, yeah, he's in the yellow, but they got dudes who can run back there. So the court, I mean, my big takeaway right now on that is the quarterback run game is going to be prominent. It looks like. Well, and I think this is the time to do it too. You got to see what you have, and uh, with a lot of those guys, mobility and dual threat is their strength, and so. How are you going to have a fair evaluation of a quarterback you didn't recruit that you've never seen play live before, at least against a, a live defense, uh, without having them be open for contact? So I think that this is a, a golden opportunity to do that. Uh, you have the luxury of, of bodies to where you're not just beating up two or three guys. you got six guys you can put back there, and you give each one of those players um, that are on the field a chance to show their whole skill set 100%. as opposed to being you know, just some uh, no-contact uh, run-through guy. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show as we talk uh, opening headlines here. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of of the belief, like, what are you even trying to protect here at this point? It's not like Nebraska's had, like, you know, playoff level or conference championship level seasons the last few years. They've had the worst run in modern-day program history. You've got to find ways to test your team, get them better. And I do like that Matt Rule is turning them loose. I mean, I, I was trying to think, we know Riley didn't have quarterbacks live. We definitely know Frost didn't have the quarterbacks, at least the top quarterbacks live. I think I don't know. Um, you know, when they would do like third units, like Harburg was live in a spring game, mm -hmm. I believe last year. Mm -hmm. Um, but like top level quarterbacks, you might have to go all the way back to Bill Callahan. You might. I don't know. It's possible that they turned him loose and we just didn't know. But did Bo Pelini run him live? I, I don't remember. I mean, well, just, I don't know because we don't see practice. Yeah. Well, we we hear we talk yeah. to him afterwards, and they tell yeah. us that. So, yeah. like, I don't recall. I I definitely know Callahan for at least two or three springs took the jerseys off. Oh, guys. absolutely, Callahan did. I mean, they, that's how they found out about Zach Taylor um, and Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> Remember they tried to get Joe Daly killed in a spring game by yeah. <laughs> just yeah, doing engage eight blitzes. Yeah. So on. so this spring. <laughs> There's a lot of urgency attached to the conversation. I hope people understand that. If you're Heinrich Harburg, this is it now. You gotta if you're gonna make a move, you start making it right now, or or it's not gonna happen this year. Yeah, that's why I think it's fair to yeah. to allow totally Heinrich agree, Harburg, Harburg, who yeah. running is one of his best attributes, to and be able to showcase strength. that. Yeah, to be able to showcase that. Yeah, because when you tag off like a little finger tackle, it's not gonna bring down Heinrich Harburg. So you you don't get like a true right. I mean, it's 100 percent You try to tackle that guy. Yeah. He's like a defensive end. Yeah, he's one of the best looking athletes on the team. Yeah, he's what where are we going to say? 6'4, 220. Oh, I think he's taller than 6'4. He right? might be taller. Isn't he 6'6? Six, six? Yeah, look that up, Jonathan. Um, I I this is listen, they were halfway through spring drills on Saturday. It's it's you got to perform if you're if you're trying to make up ground on 6'5, 210. 6'5, 210. He probably weighs a little more than 210. Um this is a this is the time to do it. So this is yeah, that was big. That was a big scrimmage for those guys. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. It was also the coaches clinic, and yeah. Tom Osborne spoke at the clinic. And man, we got a great thread on the Red Sea Scrolls. If you're not a Husker Online, uh, you know, I every year, you know, we have a lot of members of our site, a lot of coaches, and, and they kind of share their thoughts. And you know, not surprisingly, the the feedback of the clinic was really, really well received. Um, just rules presence um the presentation obviously coach osborne but the assistant coaches and 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 just all the details but you know that was their first one and, uh -huh. and rule has said as a coach we're gonna have i've heard him say this now twice 
we're going to have the best clinics and the best camps anywhere around. And if we don't have the best ones, tell us why. Here's the deal. Uh, and Sean, I'm, if you remember, I told you this in June when, when the Frost was having his camp. I think those camps and the way they're put on are extremely important for the program because they're a window into your program. If you go over to a camp and it's sloppy and you're a coach, particularly, forget being a media member or a kid. If you go to a camp and it's sloppy, that's not a, that's a bad look for the head coach. That's a bad look for the organization. You want your camps to be buttoned down, tight, well run people energetic in your in your system or it's going to be po reflect poorly all it takes is one bad interaction with someone and people are going to walk away from the camp and go yeah i mean why, why do we even do that it's that's not a very good program even the meal is important at like a camp or Everything a clinic is. like one coach commented because yeah i used to be just like you got a red hot dog he's like they had a full catered meal this year from single barrel barbecue mm -hmm. or whatever they brought really? over and single, it, they brought it single yeah barrel? and it was and, and the guy goes it was one of the best banquet or catering meals i've ever had yeah you know and, and <laughs> you laugh but people remember I'm not laughing you know? <laughs> i like hot dogs though that's the thing um I, I, <laughs> you're, and you're hungry you, by the, really for hungry. the record how many bags of beef jerky did you grab i put, two? That, I put that down two, i've been trying in, in like 45 days. seconds it was impressive two huh? bags of beef jerky yeah i was not i haven't eaten all day. so we have you kind of like a little over cost, i call it the costco cabinet here and i it's gotta got, start packing a lot just <laughs> random snacks and sip walks in grabs two full bags of beef jerky I was thinking about the whole way here and the beef did you go beef stick and trail mix no i no original and original okay two beef jerkies yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just ripped into them you yeah. missed taco tuesday at canopy market well i don't have a lot of time for taco tuesday <laughs> i just walk in and grab them dollar 25 tacos <laughs> there you go right. but anyway so, yeah so, so back to the coaches thing yeah and this was uh I think Sean, you you mentioned this and uh, make sure we put it in the observations. Was about rule having this total open door policy, open campus, he calls open it. campus to coaches, not only at the high school level but state college level. You saw Jeff Jamrog yeah, and right. the Midland staff; they were on the field, just walking around, like <laughs> looking, watching the coaches Jamrock operate, was coaching up the special team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, but he's a great special teams guy. He is. Like, he is. I mean, he he helped turn around the 2014. That was the last time Nebraska really had good special teams. Jamrod was had his fingers all over that. So I, I think that's a great reflection of that. Like the the importance that they put on a coach's clinic, the having this open campus policy. Because they like they, as Matt Rule said, I think it was last week. He said, "I want Nebraska to be a place where, it's a, where coaches want to come, and not just like come and visit for like the recruiting standpoint, but just just to talk football." talk with the coaches, see, see what Nebraska is doing and maybe offer some advice for what Nebraska could do uh, differently going forward. So I, I think that's, that's kind of all intertwined, like the, 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 the clinics and practice access and all that stuff. And I think it's an important step in year one to establish those relationships. I got to say, it feels welcome. It, you know, you know, you, there's always a balance in the conversation, but it, it feels welcome over there. It does. They, they actually kind of welcome media. Um, now, again, the balance is it's year one and no games have been played. So I don't know. I mean, is it going to, I hope we're, I hope to God we're talking like this in year three, it's especially if it means they've been to two bowl games um, and they're, you know, they've won nine games one of those years or, or two of those years, but I, we'll just have to see. But right now, God, yeah, I mean, it's a really welcoming environment. Well, just the number of people you see, take out the media. There's a lot of us. I mean, there's over 50 of us on the days we get to go. Yeah. But just the amount of just random former players, high school coaches, you know, Trev, the, a lot of the athletic, I mean, it, it's practice in the spring and, and there's probably a hundred people down there watching. High interest. It. Yeah. Like you just see, you just Dr. turn the corners or you turn a corner and there's a Mon Green standing there yeah. or Zach Bowman. And they're very interested. Zach Bowman coaches at Midland. Yeah. Those guys are very interesting. Like Amon Green's very interesting to me because he's one of the, I mean, he's, he's a video game instructor now. Well, mm -hmm. that, sports. but he was a, a all American level running back who was one of Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers, very best running backs ever. He's very low profile. He's going to keep a very low profile. It's fascinating to me for some reason. Isn't that fat? I mean, Amon Green is back at Nebraska as an e sports professor. Like, if I would have told you 20 years ago, Amon Green will work at Nebraska, but he'll be essentially a professional video game yeah. professor know, and not have anything to do with football. Well, you wouldn't have known how big esports was no, going to be. No, that's true. And it, you, didn't, you didn't know it. You wouldn't have world anticipated has changed that. quite a bit since the late 90s. Yeah, you wouldn't have envisioned the video game explosion, how it's become a fabric, part of the fabric of our world. And so it makes sense that way. But there he is. Look at Amon.
he's very he keeps a very low profile for us and, and I'm, i bet these kids are coming in i mean thank you man. they can look up who he is but like they have no they idea know. like no. that this guy was like him. they weren't born when he was playing right? no they weren't born <laughs> a lot of the guys when he was playing yeah these guys were born like in oh 2000 2000 yeah but he was one 2002 he was a prolific nfl running back he too, was at that so, yeah you're yeah. right yeah but they, they might remember. know more for his packer days than his nebraska yeah days. absolutely not related to niles paul too he's niles paul's uncle is that right so yeah there's a quite a bit going on over there it's sort of amazing and thank god we can go watch it i mean it, it's 40 minutes it was good. it's all you need though i mean Oh, I'd like to see some play. Well, yeah, you'd yeah. like. Well, I see a little bit more. I've come actual to terms. Football. We're not going to get seven on seven or team. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, that's what you would like to see. So, for being greedy, you can ask for that. You, but, uh, yeah, it would be nice. I don't think we're going to get that right. You know, we've asked kind of, and I, I and I get it. I mean, it puts a lot of pressure on the kids if they know like what is happening is being going to be reported on. Oh, yeah, I don't think people think about that part of it. See, what I think the automatic response by fans or media is. Oh, the coach doesn't want to show what they're doing. I think there's also the element of it puts pressure on the players more. They already have a lot of pressure on them in this world because everything is on tape and pe there's gifts and all that. And then the media, then we go over there and we report whatever happens. I mean, I just thought about it today. I almost was going to write in our observations that Garcia Castaneda dropped a ball in, in, on a kickoff or maybe it was a punt, whatever. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I just said it, I guess. So it's almost <laughs> like doing it. But um, but I was like, ah, no, don't do that. Why do that? Um, but that's what that's what happens if we're 75 Nebraska football media members are at a practice and a guy drops a pass. There's going to be 75 people mentioned. When I told Robin and you guys today, I'm like, I don't want our observations to be like, so-and-so ran a good rep. Like, how do you know? How do we right, even no, know? That's, that's Who really cares? Point. You know, and it's like on it's, air. It's yeah. spring. Yeah, and you don't even know what he was asked to do. Yeah, exactly. Right. And the coaches praised him for his. Did they? Do you know? I mean, I I'm getting old, man. I'm really you are. Old. I, I've just become Sean. Get off my lawn, you sound guy. Like me. About practice coverage here, but <laughs> you got to check yourself, Sean. One other thing about like the check yourself observ observing. You know, Matt Rule. I've heard him say this too that pro football focus grades. Yeah. Um. You know, in the NFL, when he's in the NFL, it caused the most like, anxiety anxiety amongst their players because literally those grades like had a lot of stock in them and how they were evaluated, shown on TV. Um, that if they had a poor grade, it affected a player. Yeah, and you know we we kind of drive the bus on that here. You know, literally, Robert and I get up at seven a.m. or six a.m. on Sunday mornings to get those up and. You know, those players see that stuff. Real talk. Does it give? Does do, do, did what rules say give you pause about doing that? It. I can't not do it because they're there. If we didn't do it, somebody else would. And there is like value beyond just the a, a grade analysis. Snap like counts. there's snap counts and uh, stop like, tackles. Yeah, like different like stop tackles yeah yeah but behind the like normal game book stat sheet that you get the stuff like that so you can actually look at like uh you know i'm just trying to think like uh, broken tackles 10 plus yard runs in a game first down runs converted yeah, ca yes catches that converted first downs that sort of thing that's like all they're available so there's like good data there mm -hmm. that goes beyond just what some guy that was grading it right. graded out so i for me the grades they don't mean much. It's it's all the other stuff. Like when you look inside the actual stat seat, that's where the those grade outs that we do, I think, have the real value. Yeah, I go right to them. I go right to them. Well, look, the pass protection grades, like what did people expect them to be the last few years? Poor. Poor. And so they were poor. I mean, but I think they were even poorer than people probably thought they would be. That was part of the issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we had some like 0, 0 0.0 or under 10 grades on pass block. Yeah, it got got pretty dark and i know like you see <laughs> pretty see pretty you see like social media reaction like former players uh that just hate pff grades oh. because their their thing is that they have no idea what the player's assignment is on a given play how do they know what he was supposed to do and if he did it right wrong and how do you grade that without knowing the scheme and, and yeah. the responsibility within it's it fair and there's there's merit to that that's fair so that's why you take the the, the grades for what they are yeah it's With the other stats the that's that's where i think there's actual value it's possible we should 
getting a little into the weeds, but maybe put an explainer on there. We year. do. Do you? Oh, yeah. Anyway, the snap counts are big to me. <laughs> I mean, you know, then yeah. you know who's playing. That's the main thing that's important. And how me. much they're playing. Well, yeah. on the throwing chart, the number of throws that traveled 20 yards, the number of throws that yeah. went 10 to 20, the number sure. of throws that were zero to 10 behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, it's really helpful information to know how many times they threw on the field. I don't, you can't keep track of that. No, first. it's hard to do that. Yeah. But all right, when we come back, um, we'll steer the bus back on spring football here, and we're going to talk offensive storylines next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washat talking offensive storylines now for spring practice and for Nebraska. And we've hit on quarterbacks already, guys. So I want to go right to the running back discussion. Um, you, you look at that, and I think it's clear that um, uh, A.J. Allen's obviously got to watch, Andy Grant's got to watch, but Gabe Irvin Jr., continues to get a lot of praise uh, for everyone, including the head coach. Yeah. I mean, he twice has been lauded by Rule. Today, now, just to be clear, I mean, twice Rule has kind of praised him without being asked. Today, E.J. Barthel, Tuesday, E.J. Barthel was asked about him. And he wasn't. He wasn't effusive like Rule was. He said he's running. Be he's he's running behind his pads. Well, he's a big guy who runs behind his pads. I don't. I'm not. I don't think anybody's hand in the job to Gabe Irvin right now. AJ Allen's hurt, which I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. He's in a yellow jersey. He's in a yellow off the jersey side on Tuesday. So yeah, AJ Allen's hurt. They have a. I mean, I got a good look at Grant today because he was returning kickoffs and he looks good returning them. He mm -hmm. could be again. Their, he could be their number one kickoff returner. Um, he looks good doing it. He looks fit and lean. Um, once again, again, we should do our weekly Ramir Johnson update. Um, he is playing multiple positions, it looks like. They're just, they're just going down that road again mm -hmm. with him. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Anthony Grant, I still have a hard time looking past some of the moves he made in the open field. Like He did things last year that we hadn't seen Nebraska backs do for a while, and I felt like as the year went on, he got banged up. There were a couple of those games in a row where they had to give him like thirty plus carries. Yeah, but you can't you can't do that. I mean, you right. pay the price for going ten extra carries a game. Yeah. the next week. Me and Robin would talk about it up there in the press box. I thought his legs looked heavy a couple mm -hmm. games. Um, I thought his legs looked heavy at Rutgers, for instance. Um, yeah, he carried a heavy load. And the I Indiana thought game, he had a heavy load too. Yeah, he. So yeah, I just thought his legs looked heavy. Um, Keep him around 18 to 20. I think he's good. But you start pushing 25 to 30 plus with any back. I don't care who you are. In this league, it's like the NFL. Did Robin, they? I mean, you watch a lot of NFL. How many backs really get over 20 carries in a game? Very few. Very few. And they're what the about, elite. What about like, Saquon? What do they give him? Not anymore. They don't. I mean, he's had, he's done it. I mean, just out of necessity. They didn't, they didn't have any wide receivers. But, right. you know, I mean, that's you're talking about like the elite, like the Derrick Henrys, the Saquons. Like very few people can do that. Like. I mean, Rex Burkhead's legs looked heavy when he was carrying it 30 times a game. So, yeah. I mean, that's to be expected. And the Big Ten wasn't as good when Rex Burkhead was in this league. I mean, it's a lot better league now than it was in 2011. Yeah, by the way, A.J. Allen, we haven't heard buzz about. Mm -hmm. Not in this camp. Now, we will say that he's made some some big plays, like okay. chunk plays. Okay. But I don't know if that – what the level of consistency those plays have I don't know what's come. going on there. It's hard to understand without seeing it, what how it's shaken out exactly. Yeah. But. We'll find out Thursday a little more because when Rule – Rule is the only one that addresses injuries. Barthel wasn't going to touch injuries. So AJ uh, Allen. on on AJ Allen's status, we'll yeah. she learn, learn a little bit more on that. Yellow jersey though, and he was you know you know what didn't have a cast. Like, he was just there. He was going through like the the band work, just like with Casey Thompson and all those guys. So I mean, he didn't look like he was like out with anything significant. But that yellow jersey means you're not doing anything he's with got, the team. He's got what I would call like oh, there park, you go right there uh, parking lot skills. I mean, you get him in a parking lot and he just can make you miss no matter what. <laughs> Um, and you know, he, he does. It, and Maurice Washington had that, you know, where yeah. you, know, you just throw him out in the lot and he's going to make you miss. Like, yeah. you're not going to get him. Difference and, between AJ Allen and Maurice was AJ Allen will, will get up between the tackles mm -hmm. and do damage. Maurice wouldn't, no, but Maurice on the perimeter was, was as good deadly. as you'll ever see. Deadly. Like, one of the things we're talking about with heavy legs and just the totality of the, the season, I thought EJ Barthel made a really interesting comment about that to where, like, a guy like Anthony Grant. He doesn't need to teach Anthony Grant how to run the ball. What they want to do is get him to teach teach him where to run the ball. Oh yeah, and I think that that's maybe a reflection on 
you know, you don't have to run directly into contact. Uh, you can find ways to, that was, that's one of the things I really liked about AJ Allen was that he never took like big shots. Didn't seem to. He was always knifing through yeah. contact where he was oh, hit, a knife, right? but he wasn't taking full on hits the way Anthony Grant was. And yeah. So I think that's probably something with Grant that they're really trying to work with him. Like when he's in the open field, he's a, he's a game changer, yeah. but like, you gotta be able to find those angles and, and maybe save your body a little bit from those big hits that he was taking probably way too much of early on. Yeah, Allen is really – he really cuts through traffic ni nicely. He's like butter. Um, um, but, but yeah, I think I got good backs. I don't know how it's going to shake out. I really don't. That's a good That's a good group. You, you know, you always got to mention Emmett Johnson, too. I don't know where he fits in all of this, but they, that's a good group. All right, wide receiver, and let's lump tight ends into this conversation next, too. I mean – I don't know what we really learned. I think we've learned that Billy Kemp is for sure going to be a factor, which we know we knew that. I think he's going to probably be the punt return guy. And I think he's got a pretty good chance to have the most targeted throws this year of any receiver. Um, yeah, it sounds like Xavier Betts is getting some good work uh, yeah. with the top offense right now yeah. already. Um, the main thing with Xavier is he's got to get his academics back in line. That's it. That's uh, it. Cause he looks good. Mm -hmm. Like I, I put, you know, he was he was a return man today. Man, that picture looks good. Xavier's in shape. He got himself in shape. He's in. He looks like he's game ready. Well, he's just gifted. I mean, yeah. Mike Huffman, the Bellevue West coach, said, you know, he had to work on some academics in high school and didn't do the weights class for two years in a row, and they took his name off the board for the record of the clean, and he was mad about it. He goes, "What's the record, coach?" And the co he tells him it's like three fifteen. He goes, "Put three twenty on the bar," and he just went in there, unwarmed up, and did a three twenty power clean. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, put my name, freak. put my name back up up top now. <laughs> That's a freak. Yeah, and he looks good. I mean, he, he, he's in shape. It is an academic thing. He's just got to get. He's just. Oh, come on, how many? He missed two full semesters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so he's got to get. You know, I'm guessing he's got to make up. He ground. wasn't focused on his schoolwork very hard. I mean, he was around, but I don't, I don't know if he was actually in classes. Or... Yeah, he's got to make up ground. A lot of ground. He's like you walking into Planet Fitness though when you pick up those bars in there. Yeah. Very similar. Doesn't even stretch. <laughs> yeah. Just two plates on two look. plates on the incline right oh, away. Geez. You just go up on that bench, put like 405 on. No, and I really don't, Sean. No spotters. <laughs> well, you don't need a spotter in Planet Fitness because it's because they it's the you know, they don't have it's hooked to a mechanism. You'll you get the lunk alarm hit on you. Yeah. Is that get, one of those gyms where if you grunt, they'll throw you out? Yeah, yeah they suppose they'll interrupt the pizza party. Yeah. And, <laughs> Easy. <laughs> well, it's All right. not. They could be a sponsor of ours if we play this right. They got tight ends, though. I want to hit on the tight ends. Are There's no over? pizza parties at Planet Fitness. <laughs> yes, there are. I've been I've been to one when there was a pizza party. No. Yes. Really? Yes. It was like a Friday pizza party. I've never seen it. They have tanning booths. Your Planet yeah, Fitness does sit next to a pizza ranch. It does. Yeah, so maybe that's why you just <laughs> had the KFC. The <laughs> KFC in a long, long John. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right. Um, tight, let's talk tight ends. Arik Gilbert, Thomas Fedoni. I mean, they, they've got guys there. I think uh, again with Arik Gilbert, the question is getting that waiver from Georgia, which I'm I've been told by people Georgia will sign off on it to get everything done with. What are they waiting for? Well, you know, these you know how it goes. It takes some time to get some bureaucratic stuff pr processed. Um, I think the main thing is Georgia didn't want him in the SEC. You know, yeah, I could, I, the I fact could see that, that he left to go to another school, Look which he, need, he needed a ch change of scenery and dealt with some personal issues. And th I think they were happy to help him get to Nebraska. Just 275 pounds of athlete. Yeah. Right there. Chiseled. His so, face fills up that helmet. If Look at he that. can just even come remotely close to realizing that potential, holy moly. Yeah, they got – I mean, they just got two tight ends that are clearly very Freaks. physically gifted. Freaks. Yeah, and, and Fedoni also looks great. So, I mean, it's. I just don't want to go too far with the conversation. Because they haven't you don't done know. it. Yeah. I mean, the ability on paper is as good as any athletes they've had in this program. No doubt. But, but paper is one thing. Yeah. Saturdays is another thing. Yeah, you got to see it. Yep. But man, with the, they line up with that, and if you if you go three tight end set, you that. trot J Jen Iron Bonner out there too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good look. Yeah, and you wrote about Jen Iron Bonner. Yeah, that's um, a good looking tight end group, and the leg injury he suffered, and it felt like he didn't really have a home. Now Matt Rule and these guys have kind of found a new role for him, and it might yeah. work out well. Kind of a hybrid tight end, mm -hmm. and he's one of the better looking players on the team. That's a great room, and Borkerture was all right. I mean, Borkerture was fine last year. He's a good player too. 
they're they got they have a good tight end room. They got a good running back room. Running back's the best room. Tight ends probably Jake Apple get two in that room now. Yeah, tight ends probably number two. And then I don't know, I don't know what to make of receiver right now. I really don't. I I don't it, either. I, it's yeah, there's some I haven't seen enough of it. Well, Lante yeah. Brown might return in June, so that's a big question still. I think Castaneda is back in the in the conversation. Fleeks is going to play. Kemp's going to play. Washington's going to play. You got, they got some guys. You got four. Okay, I'm going to say right now it's Betts, Isaiah Garcia, Castaneda, Kemp, Fleeks, Washington. Those five right now, and then maybe Elante Brown. I'm hearing Ty Hans name mentioned a little bit, yeah. and then some of those freshmen like Malachi Coleman when they get here, Jaden Doss. Yeah, you know you might see one of bad. those guys. I mean, hell, uh, Jer- Jeremiah Charles is triple jumped over 50 feet this last week yeah that's not a bad it's not a i don't want to it's not a bad group i just don't know it's it's a hard hard group to read a little bit and they don't have a lot of downfield threat other than bets i mean who is it besides bets you gonna are you gonna say belly camp a little bit he can line up wide well fleeks is a track guy but yeah he's more, more of an all running purpose. back yeah mm-hmm. would you say that this off season is as big of a window for true freshman receivers to come in mm. not just one or two guys but i mean could you see multiple freshmen coming in and having a role this year one, that maybe one possibly two and a lot of it's if coleman's ready mm-hmm. doss well, they got to be really good i mean yeah. i mean that's the thing yeah. I, I don't care what's in front of them you got to be really bryce good. turner and Jalen lloyd are raw like they're talented but they're okay. raw um jeremiah charles has only played you know, a little bit of football. Yeah, this is not like I always say. You're going to be playing Michigan in September, right? NFL corners, right? <laughs> I mean, so we'll see if they're ready. I um, mean, I don't know. I, I, if I were a coach, I'd be getting my players ready with Michigan in mind. Not right. to mention Minnesota. One final Colorado thought on offensive Michigan. line: Ben Scott in a green jersey. Luckily, nothing major with him. Uh, not a lot of injuries so far, and there was thought that maybe he suffered something. But Ben Scott was out there repping. Uh, with the green jersey, so I, th- I thought that was positive. But it looks like Sip Bryce Benhart has physically gotten his body right. Yeah, he's, he's slimmed down. He, he's, and there's Ben Scott, uh, Keegan Menning in the green. So they they've got of their 14 available linemen, 11 or three of the uh, three of the 14 are in green. Is Teddy Prohaska being the other. Yep, good job. Yeah, um, Benhart has really slimmed down. Um, they like him. I just have to see how it translates. And that's a big. I mean, this, there's no, there's really no excuses for that group now. They're all veteran players. Um, let's see what it looks like. They're all veteran players now. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk defensive storylines next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washa talking defensive spring storylines for Nebraska. And guys, I want to lead the conversation off with the secondary uh, because I think that has been one of the real strengths, not only of the defense but maybe of the football team. Um, and you know, they're missing um, one of their best guys still, Marquise Buford. But you, you look at Malcolm Hartzog and how he's played kind of a nickel that can play corner, that can play safety. He can do everything. Uh, you got Miles Farmer, who has transitioned into a rover, but they think he's got pro ability. Quit Newsom is a pro. Uh, Omar Brown has really come on. Uh, we know Gifford's a great athlete. I mean, there's just a lot of material back there, and I think that's how it's played out so far this spring. Yeah, and you know I think that uh, that's a good place to start. Um, having your secondary be the leaders was just because of the level of versatility in that room. To where you got guys playing two, three different spots. Malcolm Hartsog's taking reps at three different spots, maybe four if you count slot corner and differentiate that from nickel. So I mean, uh, that's what they're looking for. They're not looking just for good football players. They're looking for guys that can do multiple things with this Tony White defense. You're starting to kind of see where the priorities are and the personnel that's getting praised. It's the guys that can do a lot of different things and yeah. have that versatile skill set where you don't need to sub guys in and out for different packages. You guy, one guy can play three different spots if need be. Yeah. They're really good back there. And you mentioned off air, Rob, that it's by far, it's by far the best position group on defense. I'd like to see that gap close a little bit. I mean, if you're a Nebraska fan, I think you'd, you'd want to see it. You don't, I don't know if it's great news in the big 10, here we go, pouring me. Leave it to me, pouring cold water on it. To have your secondary is your best position group. I prefer it to be up front. Yeah. I mean, that's where you'd want that. Gr- but it's no group. surprise. I mean, right. both lines were the two biggest question marks. I think. Oh no, it's no surprise. Going in, so I mean, they they've clearly still got a lot of work to do. God, 
with that front. Yeah, that some of those guys though are pretty good looking players. Judy looks like a good looking player yeah. up front. Huttmacher's come a long way. Huttmacher's come he looks, a long. He way. looks different. Yeah, that was a big thing on Saturday with Rule. Rule talking about Nash Huttmacher, how he's leading the charge up front now. It's changed his body. Um, so that's good to hear. And maybe they've tinkered just with some things, whether it's strength and conditioning, nutrition, that have helped a guy like Mobility. Nash. Mobility. We, we always Mobility. have known that Matt Nash is – I mean, they said he's one of the strongest incoming guys the program's ever had, like as far as weight stuff goes. That, that's great, but you've got to figure out how to move still. It doesn't matter if you can't move. And so now I think he's finally been able to move. I mean, that's one of the things he talked about, that he's put more emphasis on mobility and flexibility and lateral movement than he ever has. And so I think that's been a big reason why not only has he reshaped his body, trimmed up a little bit to become more explosive and dynamic, but I think that's allowed him to be more productive too, where he's not just a one-trick pony where he's pushing, pushing forward and that's all he can do. I mean, the thing we're still looking for, you don't really know what depth looks like in the in, at linebacker, interior linebacker, you know, behind – behind Reimer, uh, Henrich, and Sherman. I mean, yeah, I think those are kind of your three linebackers right now. Yeah, and yeah. who's behind them? I don't know that. Butler's in that mix, I think, with Sherman. That's Jamar? Jack. Oh, really? So they're moving guys around. Now, this is this is going to – I got we got to add this. This is going to get confusing for people Yeah, because they're going to hear you say Jamari Butler and think, wait a second, isn't he a lineman? Mm -hmm. Well, they move guys around. Yeah, again. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, they're moving them. It's really, it's really hard – Interchangeable. Yeah, there's a lot of interchangeable parts. And we're going to talk about linemen that can slip, slip back to linebacker, linebackers that can move up on the line of scrimmage, and it'll get a little confusing for people. Yeah. When Javier Morton, he had a gray jersey on, right? Javier Morton. What was he wearing gray for? What? I think they were short on some receiver numbers. At least they were last week. So that then was, they moved Javier over. And yeah, he's Jaleel, play, he's playing two ways. And Jaleel Martin, was he still playing? Yeah, yeah. he had a gray on. Yeah. Receiver. So those those were the two grades. What's interesting is I was told if Jaleel Martin didn't get hurt last year early, Travis Fisher was going to push him up. Like Travis mm. Fisher really liked That's safety. Jaleel Martin as a defensive back. Yeah, it's safe. Um, so, you know, it, it is different. When you get new management, they have different ideas. They do. We're seeing that. I mean, Heinrich Harburg. No, Mark Whipple basically sent him on a bus back to Kearney. Yeah. He, he would laugh when you mentioned his name. <laughs> And, then, and the guy that Mark Whipple, wow, sure. I mean, I that's how it was that post practice. Like yeah. you asked about Harburg, and yeah. it's like, no, we're taking the kid from Hastings. The guy from Hastings is not even here anymore. Mm -hmm. right. Oh no, there's there's some guys that have, that have sort of a renewed their their career has gotten, gotten a, a, boost. a boost. And Harburg probably is the card carrier. Urban Gabe Urban's up there. Yeah, Urban's Irvin. for sure in that. Um, I'm trying to think on defense. I mean, Janiron Bonner was kind of lost. Oh, I'd say Janiron Bonner is a pretty good example, actually. I'd say Bryce Benhart's a good example. Now, he started 29 games. Don't he, Benhart has started 29 games, so it's not like he's been lost. It just seems like this this staff likes him more. You know, They feel like they can develop him better. I mean, Benhart's got the physical tools. Now, one thing I've been told for a 6'9 guy, he's got short arms. Yeah. And so, like, is that right? His wingspan for being six nine, his arm reach is not like what you would think it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a physical limitation that he had. And some people thought, oh, he could be a guard, even. Um, and yeah. The other staff, the former staff, was pretty adamant that he wasn't a guard. No. You know, it reminded me of Zach Stirrup, though. Mm -hmm. Like, then they, they all of a sudden put Zach Stirrup in at guard. And then Zach Stirrup played in the NFL. As a, did he play guard. guard? He played guard in the mm -hmm. NFL. He did. Yeah, for, for the Chiefs, for. Uh, and the Dolphins. Bit. Yeah, and the Dolphins, maybe. Yeah, I think he started with the Dolphins. And he he just retired a couple years ago. I mean, he, he got a I mean, he got a good amount of years in the league basically as a guy that got beat out by Nick Gates and they moved him inside to guard. Yeah. They had Alex Lewis. Think about that. Tackles at Nebraska were Alex Lewis, Nick Gates, and Zach Stirrup. That's pretty good. It really is. I mean, those guys all Searles overlap in that. No, no. Okay, he was he was before that, right? Alex Lewis was good. Yeah, I remember that. Remember that practice? Yes. Remember Randy that Gregory? practice? The Randy Gregory cool. Alex Lewis square off. It was a spring practice. Yeah, yeah spring practice. That almost got ugly. They were going at it hard. I, they had to take Lewis out of practice. Mm -hmm. Like they he went to the equipment room, like the training room. Yeah, had to Hawks. cool him off. Yeah, there were two big dogs getting after it that day. Well, and two alphas. Rick Kaczynski yeah. needed to get cooled off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaz was. Heated. Yeah, I think was he getting into it with Barney a little bit? Yeah, well, and with Lewis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Lewis went hard after the play and and didn't like they didn't like that their 
at that time they thought a first round draft pick was getting pushed yeah, around. Think about those guys though. Those two guys are good. Gray Gray and Lewis going at it like oh, that. And that's what we got to watch practice back then. I know. Yeah, we uh, we wa we watched that. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Alex Lewis then after that spring had to go do time in Colorado because he he got in that fight in Boulder yeah. with an yeah. Air Force cadet. Yeah. Tuned up the guy. Yeah. yeah. And the kid, the kid came from money. They, they pressed charges on Lewis, and Lewis had to go do a month. Had to go do a month, but came out of it fine, and then made it to the NFL and played for a little bit. I mean, I mean that's crazy to think like a guy in college that had to go do a month, yeah, for, for a fight. Mm -hmm. At the time, and I think the guy mouthed off to him. I don't know. I don't know, Sean. Yeah, I don't, don't want to act like I know that, but yeah, I don't know who the would mouth off to Alex Lewis. Lewis was a fourth round pick. Played. Five years in the NFL. Yeah, five years, legit, legit. transfer. Yeah, pre portal era. But, Rand, but Rand, hey, that Rand, that day Randy got him good. I know. I mean, he was messing with him. God, oh, that, Randy could get anybody. Yeah, but just about at yeah. that point he could. could do a whole show about Randy Gregory stories. Yeah. All right, when we come back, uh, we will take questions in the mailbag. Maybe we'll get a Randy Gregory question. You're listening here to <laughs> the Husker great. Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett. Welcome in, Abby Barmore, to the program. It's time for the mailbag. Abby, uh, what do you have to lead off? All right, here we go. How many scholarship quarterbacks are going to be on the roster at the end of the spring game, and who are they going to be? Uh, they have six right now, okay? I think it's for sure they're going to lose one. I think the question is they're going to lose two. And I just wonder. Well done, Sean. I, I, Perfect. I, I don't, I don't want to like, I mean, but you wonder about Casey. But what's the timeline for a guy like Casey, like a guy his age that's coming off injury that's 24 gonna, that won't have a spring? We turn 25 during the season. Actually. Yes. So, like, what are his options? Mm, um, retirement. <laughs> I mean, I don't know the it's a tough it's a tough one. It's a good question to address the question. I think you nailed it. But if Casey's one of them. Then I could, you could almost see three. Well, Lo Logan, you wonder about Logan too. Like, I mean, he can run though. That's the thing. He might fit pretty well in this system, right? Right. People have been expecting him to leave for like two years now, and all of a sudden he just keeps coming back. I don't so, think he wants to. Leave. I know. I think he really likes it. Either. The last we've heard from him, that's what he said. He likes his teammates. Likes likes just being likes here. Lincoln, coach's yeah. son. I mean, he's a teammate. Like, you yeah. got to give him credit for his attitude because. He understands, like he, you know, he's played behind some decent or pretty good starters. Like Nebraska. Yeah, it's it's a hard question to answer. I don't know what's going through Richard Torres' mind. He wouldn't seem to fit this offense very well if they're going to run the quarterback mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And think Kansas State wanted him bad. Like I'm sorry, he, they wanted Torres school, bad, yeah, he, and he picked Nebraska over Kansas State. So like, you wonder what his like if he were to want to leave Nebraska, like. With no tape at Nebraska, like what would his options be? He's got a great arm, though. He really he does. does. He's, I think he could be pretty good. Six guys. Yeah. It, it's almost unheard of to have six scholarship mm. quarterbacks going into a season. So, Sean, you're right. Somebody's going. Is it one, two, or three? That's the question I have. We think one's for sure. I think two is probably 65%. Because they lose three. I think it would have to be Casey if they lose three. Yeah. Case you'd have to be involved in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then a lot of it too is recruiting. Like what happens if like a certain like Riola picks Nebraska in May or June or something? Yeah, that adds really to that. That kind of that kind of squeezes mm -hmm. the bus pretty quick. It really mm -hmm. does. <laughs> All right. Next question. With the lack of offensive linemen, is there a chance that this line will hold up or even improve? Yeah, I think it should improve. I mean, again, I keep saying it, but that your principals are all veteran players now. There's no young guys really, right? Prohaska, you could maybe classify as a little bit young-ish. Third-year player. Third-year player, though. Um, and then who you, you projecting at left guard, probably Noradin Norili, mm -hmm. who's a veteran player. Where do you put Corcoran? Hold on. Ben Scott, center, veteran player. Corcoran could be your right guard, veteran player. Or ben Piper. Hart, ben Hart's got 29 starts. Piper's got... Oh, I mean, I got. I think Piper's got ten starts plus, maybe. Um, does he? Does Piper have that many? I think he does. He's veteran. They're all veteran. They should Luke, be good. Well, you got Latoski. Don't forget about him. Yeah, Henry. We shouldn't forget about him. I, I mean, that. Come on, they should be adequate at the least, right? Shouldn't it be adequate? Yeah, and I think that was the whole point of or a, 
one of the points of bringing back Donovan Raiola was to keep that going. Continuity. The continuity going. Yeah. Now, rule, so Rob. Where you have these older guys that aren't starting over from scratch again. Exactly. They're picking up where they left off, where by the end of the year, they were playing decent football. Could you do that to them, decent. by the way? Have a third offensive line coach for them, for those veteran guys? Because it would be number three, mm -hmm. right? That'd be tough. It'd be number three. Uh, it'd be hard to do they, that. Greg Austin was hard for those guys. Yeah. They were very, that group group was very close to him. Okay. They were close to him. And then what did rules Ethan say? Harper has 18 starts, by the way. I'm sorry? 18 career starts. Piper. Uh, this is an experienced bunch. Again, this is, now here's the thing. You got to add, rule would tell you if he was sitting here, hey, hey, simple. They were already adequate. They were, ad I was an adequate. I said that line. in his opening press conference. Yeah. That's what rule would tell you. That it was an adequate line already, so they should be fine. Some of it scheme, like when when you don't run the quarterback, it's a little bit easier to 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 scheme the run game. You know, I think when you have a quarterback that's going to move more, all of a sudden that helps the line out. No doubt about it, Sean. No when doubt. When you start about it. when they run these slow stretch play handoffs, it's a little bit easier to defend. Oh yeah, yeah. When your scheme no, no, changes Whipple, from game to game, Whipple didn't help the offensive line. No, I mean probably you could argue he heard it. You could argue. I bet you Donovan would argue he heard it. Yeah, I, I don't think those guys went out for dinner very often. No, I don't think they're going to they were, they Tavern One Eighty. No, they weren't going to out back. <laughs> Maybe in the parking lot, but not, not in the restaurant. All right, yeah, next back question. At the back of the restaurant. Okay, our next one. Who do you think will take a lot of snaps at linebacker this fall behind Henrich and Reimer? Well, they're not running that scheme anymore, so mm -hmm. I don't know if you can even truly right call up the three four. Where you had the two true inside guys, right? I think right. It, I think it's Henrich, Reimer, Sherman, and Sherman. Mm -hmm. Those are the three, and then and then Jamari Butler. I mean, I, I think those four. Like, where's Gunnerson though? Where does he kind of play? I think he's more. He's on the line. He's a line hand down. You look yeah. at him. He Robin, looks like a D line. Robin's exactly right. He's more up front. She's not moving back into a jack position. I don't think Chief Borders in that conversation. Chief Borders is next. Is he a jack? He's. He's, oh. they, they didn't say that he was a Jack. We're yeah. talking about Jack like people know what we're talking yeah, I about. When they I don't. honestly don't know what it is. I don't even know what the <laughs> hell it is. Uh, <laughs> so, the, so they're moving guys listen, around. Listen to that. Yeah. The way that the players have been describing it when they talk to us is that they can either drop back into coverage or they can rush. Okay. okay. That's the Jack position. Okay. And then they have Jamari Butler is in that with Man. Sherman. Sherman. Maverick Noonan. Noonan. Man. Yeah, that was the other one. A um, couple other guys. I'll tell you what. I mean, those are really – I mean, you saw Jamari Butler up there today. Mm -hmm. He can go into coverage, mm -hmm. that that big boy. Mm -hmm. He went impressive. on the portal for like one or two days, too. Think about that. Yeah, then they got he him came back. back. Yeah, they got him back because they needed him back. He's a guy – you know, he can go into coverage. He's big, but he was a great basketball player. I mean, he's very he's very young in football, but he's very he has a lot of potential. All right, next up, is Fred Hoiberg going after Hunter Silas, and who else are his top recruiting priorities? Yes. Uh, the day that Hunter Silas officially went in the portal, Fred Hoiberg was on the phone talking with both of Hunter's parents, um, just laying that groundwork. Obviously, there's plenty of familiarity there, so it's not like there was much of an introduction. So we'll see. Um, the list for Hunter Silas seems to grow by the day. It's well over 20 schools right now that have reached out. Um, we'll see um, where Nebraska ends up with her. I would imagine they're going to be very much in the thick of it. Um, you know, there was rumblings well before Hunter even hit the portal that uh, Nebraska was going to be one of his potential's top options. Uh, Arizona was thrown in that mix. Alabama was thrown in that mix. Um, so we'll see. But yes, they were. They are very much recruiting Hunter Salas, and they're going to uh, make him a priority. Uh, yeah, there's been several other transfers. Uh, John Hugley, the Pittsburgh center big six foot nine 200 and i think he's listed at 65 this 265 this year uh big boy um two years ago led Pitt, pittsburgh and scoring and rebounding uh, he's going to come on a visit here um in a couple weeks um and they have brady dunlap who uh was a 2023 high school recruit committed to notre dame got his release after mike bray retired so he's back on the market nebraska recruited him the first time around and almost got a visit uh, he ended up picking Notre Dame immediately after his official visit there. So he's coming to visit, uh, I think, that same weekend as Hugley. So those are the two wow. visits that are lined up. There will be more. I would expect there to be at least five to six uh, visits within the next couple weeks, uh, especially after that second dead period ends. So the, 
there's a dead period until Thursday and then through the weekend. And then there's a, or is the live open recruit open period, then another dead period. And then it's all open through let's, the off season. Let's do it this way. When's that open period start again? When's the open period start? The, the second brief window goes from Thursday to Sunday, I believe. Okay. And then I got to, I got to look at the calendar of okay. when, how long that next dead period. It's, it's a shorter brief dead period. And then it's open on all through the summer. Okay. All right. Final question, Abby. All right, Easter's coming up this weekend. So what's on the menu for Easter? I don't know. It depends where I go. It's going to be a nice Easter. Is it? Yeah. Is it going to be a nice Easter? 70 degrees. Well, <laughs> 70, 70 plus degrees. Oh, weather-wise. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> I've had it. We've had the Easter bunnies had to have a, a, a few a, indoor egg hunts over the last few years. Yeah. It's been <laughs> not yeah, pleasant. It's, yeah, it's Discover like an a, egg like a Memorial Day weekend in your house. I'm you with know? you. I'm with you. <laughs> It's like, oh, there's some jelly I, beans the Easter Bunny left back. What do I hope is served? I don't know. What's we're gonna, we're typical gonna go, Easter fare is what? Well, I mean, we're going to brunch. Like, we'll go to church at 930. Yeah, you'll go somewhere really then, expensive. Well, we're going to go to Firethorn's brunch. Like, <laughs> yeah, Firethorn's brunch. There you go. <laughs> I would call, I You're mean, not going to Pizza Ranch, are you, Sean? <laughs> I'll, come, I'll come see you after your workout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Play that we'll meet for Pizza Ranch. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't have any country club plans. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a I'm huge deviled egg fan. Oh, God, are you? And yeah. I make just a standard, like, dill-based deviled egg. They're fantastic. Dill-based. But I've been seeing these, like, targeted ads about smoked deviled eggs on the Traeger. Are you going to try, try it? I'm going to try it. Try it. I'll, I'll give you a full report. Are you a ham guy, anyone? Eh. I'll eat if it's there. I'll do it. I never, like, seek out ham. No, I mean, if you have multiple meat options, I don't really see ham as like your mm. first call. You know, no, no. You know what? I'm gonna go get some ham. Like, I'm never, I don't know if I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> did that hit home? It really yeah. did. Really, did. <laughs> really well. I mean, that was a great analysis. Yeah. Did that if hit? you have multiple meat options, ham's usually not the go-to. It's yeah. not. It really isn't. It's really not. Prime rib or ham? Yeah. <laughs> toss up. What's it gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> you want the prime rib or the ham? Some people were making the debate between pr uh, turkey and ham would they? on Thanksgiving or oh, Christmas. Turkey. And people are saying that they like ham better. Mm -hmm. I'll take turkey. Give me turkey. That's cringy. But some people just are anti turkey. They don't like it. They we'll have some brunch. They think it's a trash bird. Wow. Turkey? Yeah. That's too bad. I've never heard that. One of your former employees thinks that. Mr. Hoppin. Mr. Dan Hoppin. Yeah, I was, He's a ham I guy. It. That seems blasphemous to me. Guy. All right, let's not. That's not. That's awkward. Abby, discussion. what are you eating? I honestly have no idea. I'll be lucky if I do get to eat, though. Why is that? I, I don't know. Um, we are going to our family friend's place, so I have no idea what okay. they're cooking. Potluck meal. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be fun, Abby. You'll be fine. Good It'll luck in the fun. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Abby. I uh, hope everybody listening has a wonderful Easter. When we come back, we'll close the show. Uh, Michigan held their spring game. Uh, a few recruiting nuggets as well to pass on. We'll hit on all that next. You're listening to the Husker Online Show. Final segment here of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sippel, Robin Washett. As, uh, it's been fun, boys, as we get ready for Easter weekend. Had a nice ham conversation there in our previous segment. But um, let's talk some spring ball here, wrap it up. Um, Michigan held their spring game on Saturday. They were the first one in the Big Ten and that's kind of Harbaugh's deal. Like, he likes to get it done with early. And you'll like this. Somebody told me every year, Harbaugh, he, he likes to go on, like, a big trip to Italy or Europe with his family. So by getting all this done now, it allows him to get away for a little bit. Um, to, well, I'm glad he can accommodate himself. Um, he um, – they drew – what, did they draw 2,000 to that thing? I mean, about? it was freezing cold, though. It was okay. chilly. I mean, it was chilly. Yeah, I know they didn't draw very well. And I, all I know about is they didn't draw well and – and Ernest Hausman had eight tackles to lead the defense. I don't think Jim Harbaugh wants to draw well at the spring game. I just think he wants to have it as a 15th practice. You know, and that's the, you know, Nebraska, it's what happens here is very unique. Mm -hmm. Like very few spring games post 2020 are going to be as big as Nebraska's. I felt like pre COVID, you saw like, a it, lot. It, yeah, ramped up at some places. Um, but since COVID, Nebraska and, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio, like they have some of the bigger crowds you see. Yeah. Colorado is going to be the story of the spring, though. Their spring. Game. They've sold it out. Now, they're not, it's not the entire stadium, but they, some of it's, they don't have a full stadium 
to offer. But yeah, it's sold out. All the tickets are sold. And what? How many tickets are sold? Forty-five thousand. 40, so yeah. Nebraska's already sold more than Colorado. Yeah, but I out. think Colorado mm -hmm. it was limit. It was there was a yeah, there was a number just, that just for some perspective. Like yeah, we're considering Nebraska having very, relatively slow ticket yeah. sales, and they still have more than. Colorado. Well, Nebraska's is, in the mid fifties right now. I know. Fifty two, according to last Trev week. Alberts, last week. It's a thing here. Everybody knows, and it probably is not going to go away. Now, especially with a first year head coach. I mean, yeah. there's a curiosity factor that's always kicked in hard when there's a new coach. New here. coach, new players, new quarterback, maybe. I mean, so yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot to watch just from that standpoint. But you know, usually after the first three or four series, you're like, okay, I'm good. But they still have a like three and a half quarters to play. <laughs> you know, you. I think people do want to, I mean, I think they would we want to lay their eyes on Jeff Sims for sure. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it'll always probably be a thing here. I, unless everything goes in a tank and I, I don't foresee that happening. And it helps when the game is actually somewhat a game, you know, when they actually play real football, they it tackle. I mean, these tag off things they've been doing the last few years are just awful mm -hmm. like it's it's painful to sit there and watch touch football is it now is it for everybody though did you have friends that yeah would i mean you can't otherwise. even get excited about a big run because like the guy would have been tackled it wasn't even thud you no, speak from, from the perspective of someone who's covering it though if you were just going would it be okay i don't know i listened to the crowd just kind of just was like a dull murmur for the entire game there was like no reaction because mm -hmm. it wasn't real football well, like heinrich harburg are you gonna really bring that guy down with the hand yeah, and Megan's got the graphic here on spring game attendance for Nebraska. Oh, let me see. Um, if you if you pull this up here and, and look at the past years, it'll be interesting just to see what this first year of Matt Rule's spring game will draw. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking like last year they got fifty four thousand three fifty seven at the spring game. You know, the 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 game before COVID under Frost. Like Frost had two good years in a row, 86, 8, 18, 85, 9, 46. Yeah, those are good. And so here's the here's the number for those spring games. And you know, it's it's kind of a good feel of the pulse of where things are at with a certain coach when you look at these numbers. Yeah, kind of. Um, it is. I mean, you think about okay, I don't know what but the a 60,000 crowd for those two 13 and 14 games. That was kind of like when people were getting worn down by Bo. Like he's still 61,000. Right. I'm going to say it was a good number. Yeah. But the previous Bo ones, when you go up, bigger, yeah. Um, were bigger. Yeah. Then Riley. Riley had his first big one. Then it, yeah. you know, it kind of triculated a little bit. But you look at Bo and his first yeah. 80,000 his first year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I still think the one that really set the tone, though, you know, was you the know 04 Callahan. Callahan one. 100%. Sean. 64, 61,417. I mean, that was an anom 20 years ago. And that, to me, Steve Sipple, is your column. Like, the, the history of the spring game at Nebraska. <laughs> wow. 20 years in now. Yeah. Tour. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I just I remember vividly covering it during the glory, glory years, and there was not that many people there. In the 20s. 20s, right. Um, so remember Bo's first spring game as an assistant coach? It was raining. Yeah. It be Yes. It became a thing. Really, with Callahan, wouldn't you say? In recruiting, say? I mean, they brought yeah. all the NFL guys back. Yeah. yeah, it became a thing in 04 for all intents and purposes, I think, if I'm remembering right. Yeah, during the Solich era, you could see a crowd of 30,000 or a crowd of in the mid 20s. Remember that the first snap of that game, Bill Callahan's 04 mm -hmm. game, when they, they shifted like three guys at once and there was like just an audible gasp <gasps> and like cheers because this like West Coast offense. Yep. I'll never forget that. And then they threw it ball deep. Surreal. Yeah, they, they, they throw the ball deep. deep. Yeah. The amount of window dressing his offense used to have, too. I mean, there was a lot of motions and shifts. Mm -hmm. It was. It was a good offense, though. I mean, Bill had a very good offense. Yeah, scoring points wasn't the problem. Wow. They executed on offense. <laughs> they did. No doubt about it. Was, it. Was, it, was a, it was an excellent offense. Yeah, and I, the Solich element is going to really be interesting. Oh, that's – yeah. That I, I would think that that would give you a ticket sales boost, I would think. We'll see. Because if you're a former player that played for Frank, mm -hmm. you want to be there for mm -hmm. Frank Solich. Oh, absolutely. There'll be a huge, huge number of formers. Mm -hmm. And I imagine somebody's going to try to put together something for him, whether it's there's Friday, a Friday night dinner, Friday night dinner on yeah. campus. Yeah, there's a Friday night. Dinner. So like they'll have a big deal for him Friday night. Yeah, um, there's the, I mean, some pretty I'd say pretty big names have been invited. Did you get your invite yet? I have not. Oh. <laughs> I don't qualify as a big name. <laughs> um, um i uh, but i know that i know that that's in the works 
But yeah, I, I think Nebraska will get between 65 and 70. That's my, Ooh. that's my, they're, they're okay. 52, 53 right now. Yeah. I think they can get to 65 to 70. Range. And that was before the Solich bump. So you got to anticipate a bit of a spike a there from that. Yeah. I think the weather's the bump. Oh God, the weather's huge in this conversation. Absolutely. Well, it's not huge in tickets sold though. I mean, no, nobody's going to push the push though. The late yeah. push. Nobody's going to give away their tickets because it's raining. They can't. But there might not be as many people who show up. You like how I put in parentheses the Bo Pelini cat game? Uh, that yeah. was a little weird. Um, <laughs> it was a it was a land, it was a mile marker on the spring game history. It for sure was. But at that point, I thought he was making a mockery of it. I was not down with it as much as other people. I don't even think he was comfortable doing it. No. Oh, I don't know. He's kind of crazy. Weird. It was weird. He's kind of crazy. I think he was kind of. Ah, it was very. Awful. It was it, funny, but like it weird. was funny, weird, funny. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be like me. I mean, if I did something, no one would think it's funny. They'd be like, what are you doing with a cat? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of haughty in some ways. And I, and I, and I think Nebraska's program is one that you don't mess around with it like cats. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's like, you know, some people would say, no, that's really haughty. Simple. It's a spring game. Have some fun. Have some damn fun. Eh, I guess. But would, would Jim Trestle do that? Would Urban Meyer do that? I think, uh, I think Nebraska should aspire to be more like Ohio State than UTEP. All right. I mean, that's not – and maybe UTEP would say, what are you talking about? We'd never bring a cat to Art Spring game. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I hate to disparage UTEP, but you see what I'm saying. You know, I'd like Nebraska to be more in the realm of Ohio State than New Mexico State. Remember you know? the um, Harlem Shake mm -hmm. when Nebraska – and Megan's going to find this video here for us when they did that little skit. It's a 10-year anniversary of that. The, I don't um, remember that. Who's the coach? Bo. Really? And so they, 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 I don't even, can you explain? Yeah. So it was in Hawks and it was like from the aerial, like team, like all 22 cam. And they did it where they went through a drill, or whatever. And then Bo comes in just screaming, ripping into a guy, whatever. And then all of a sudden you oh, hear yeah. the, the music is like, doo, 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 and then do the Harlem shake. And then everybody's like, is in like banana suit costumes or, you know, whatever, oh, like right. dancing. And Bo's got his hat backwards. John the Poochers is grinding a broomstick. <laughs> I'm never, I, I can't get that out of my, like, I mean. You don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. Uh, He's uh, a defensive coordinator. What a visual. I love JP. What a visual. I know you do. I know you do. But no, yeah, so that was, uh, so they did that. I think Tim Miles was oh, the first one Oh, here we go. Make it, it. Oh, yeah. we're, we're so Tim it. Miles did it. Like, he they did the student section, and then he shows up in the video. But like, Is that right? In 2013. I do remember 13. That's when that trend was going crazy. Okay. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Roll oh, it back, Meg, into the beginning. Oh, God. So yeah, so come the, out the guy the... jumps off sides. Is yeah. that Jamal Turner? Look at Bo. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, then Turner starts dancing. <laughs> That's actually really funny. So here's the music playing. Like, do, 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 That's actually do, pretty do, do, do. funny. And then once the beat drops, everybody starts dancing. Then do the Harlem Street. <laughs> Look at Jamal. Keep it going. <laughs> Oh, Where's Papucha? See somewhere in here. I, he better be grinding a. There's an awful lot of humping going on in that. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> look at Bo in the front with the backwards yeah, hat on. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Who's got the the black mask on? Is that Cotton no. next to Bo? He's got like a ski mask on of the shirt off. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I need to lighten up. That looks kind of fun, actually. <laughs> What is going on? But that was just out of practice, right? Yeah, that was yeah. practice. That wasn't that was in the game. It was yeah. part of the production of that yeah. spring. But anyway, our production this year is Frank Solich. It's going to be a fun spring game. Yeah, I think it will be. It'll be it'll be kind of a mix of a mix of emotions. I'm sure. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Husker baseball this weekend. Uh, they'll play Michigan on the road. Big series for Will Bolt's team. Uh, we'll have coverage of that. Uh, no practice this weekend, so we won't be back until Tuesday when the Huskers return. Uh, that will be their ninth, I'm sorry, their their 10th spring practice will be on Tuesday of next week. So a little bit of break here for Easter. Uh, we will have Husker Online headlines, though, dropping sometime Thursday as well. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you uh, download, like, subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel or the Husker Online podcast channel, or check us out on Husker Online. we got a great spring special right now. $30 gets you access to Husker Online all the way until August 31st.